Hi there, it's Florence here and if you haven't been here before, welcome to my every two weeks dissing show and tell episode. It's not going to be two weekly for very much longer because I am heading back to uni soon. I don't think this will be the last episode, but it might be. Once I'm at uni I will probably try to film, it won't look so pretty in the background. But I also think I am going to try and film a couple of sort of pre-prepared episodes while I'm here before I head off, which aren't time sensitive. So rather than showing my new projects and my current work in progress pieces, I'll do a couple of videos where I sort of show a selection of my favourite pieces which predate this channel. So I thought I might make a video on my favourite jumpers or my favourite summer tops, which would be slightly out of season, um, and those will be extra uploads. So even if I only do monthly uploads while I'm at uni, we can fit a couple of extra episodes in and it should still be pretty regular. So yes, hi. I am a student based in Cambridge, England. Currently I'm at home in the countryside around Cambridge and I love knitting. And today should be a relatively short episode. I, unlike previous episodes, I haven't been working so much on my smaller work in progress pieces from the last episode, but I have completed a couple of pretty large pieces which were not yet in progress last episode. I think I had just obtained the yarn for both of them, but neither of them have been cast on yet. So yes, I have some completely new stuff to show. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what I'm wearing as usual. This jumper was showed in the last episode when it was freshly finished. I think it was the last episode. It's also featured in my most recent video on my channel, which is in fact a one hour and 40 minute video explaining how to make this jumper from beginning to end. This is the step-by-step -step sweater. It's by me and it has a free Ravelry download pattern, which will be linked in the description if you would like to make it. It was about a four day knit, so it was super fast. And I designed the pattern, aiming to make it a perfect pattern for a first time garment knitter. If you've never knitted anything before, I think that you can make this jumper. But also, if you are a more experienced knitter, you may well still really enjoy this jumper. It has optional short row shaping around the neck so that even if you are more capable and don't necessarily think a beginner pattern will give you the perfect result, you may still like this if you do enjoy slightly oversized sort of boxy jumper patterns. Definitely, I feel like this one, which has the optional short rows and also the folded color, holds up really well in my wardrobe against my more difficult knitted garments from previous projects. And I wore my hair up so that you can see how nicely this neckline sits. I did put a little bit of elastic in it, but the result is really lovely. The yarn that I used is Tenen by Noro. It's a 50% wool, 25% alpaca, 25% silk yarn, which it's very hard to specify the weight of. It's probably a worsted weight but it's very sort of thick and thin, it varies a lot. And I just held it with a strand of mohair to bring all the texture together into something that's a little bit more wearable for me. It's the perfect colour, it's the perfect silhouette. I really love this jumper. My drink looks like tea, but it's incredibly weak coffee. Okay, so I wanted to sort of focus this episode around the biggest finished object of the three. Not to say the others aren't large or exciting, but this is very exciting for me. I finished it last night and blocked it overnight, so I just tried it on this morning and immediately sat down to film this podcast because I was so excited about the result. I thought to lead into it, I should show you one of my older knit garments, which predates this channel, but which I've posted a lot on social media over the past year or so. This is my original April cardigan, Patterns by Petite Knit. I knitted it, I don't know, a year and a bit ago. I I feel like I always say that I've worn pieces more than any other piece of knitwear, but I think this might be the piece of knitwear that I have worn the most. It goes with everything. It's my kind of beige, can you tell? It's knitted in one strand of Drops Flora and one strand of Drops Kid Silk because I didn't want to invest too much in the project at the time, and so it was very affordable and it is a tiny bit scratchy. Honestly, it feels okay and it looks lovely, so if you are on a budget, it's a young combination that I highly recommend. I think Flora comes in at roughly two pounds per ball and Kid Silk at about three to four pounds. Both go on sale regularly for up to 40% off though. And this project doesn't use very much. I want to say roughly four skeins of each. 
When I originally knitted this, I don't think I made any modifications at all to the pattern. I knitted it in a size small, unlike most of my petite knit pattern knitwear um, and other designers too. I generally either fall into the size one category or the size two category or the extra small or small, depending on the pattern. But generally with petite knit sizing system, I think I am an extra small. I think for reference, I have roughly an 83 centimeter bust measurement which I think is pretty similar to Petite Knit's own measurements. So whatever size she knits, I'm like, it's gonna fit kind of similarly on me. I'm not shaped the same way as her. I think I'm like a bit bigger, but my bust measurement is the same. So when it comes to her jumpers and stuff, I can be pretty confident that they will fit the same. I'm roughly the same height as her as well, I think. This cardigan though is much more fitted on me than a lot of the other patterns. Not just in the sense that it's less oversized because it definitely does have less ease than most patina patterns and that's the intention but I actually find that this size small fits me like a glove like before I blocked it I was terrified that it was going to be way way too small for me and that the buttons would be like pulling apart because honestly no insult to anyone but when I look at a lot of the finished projects on Ravelry and Instagram I see that that does seem to happen um, it's not a very roomy garment at all however after blocking it did fit me pretty much perfectly I should also add, because I feel like it's interesting to a lot of people and something that you don't see in knitting podcasts because people don't tend to revisit very old garments, but I think it's good to speak about how pieces have worn. This jumper has worn really well. I mean, it's sort of what you'd expect from something with mohair, which does definitely help. I have never depilled or brushed or anything uh, this cardigan. You can see there's a little fluff just there, which I could pull off. But other than that, despite all the wear, I don't think I see any signs of wear on this cardigan at all. There is no pilling. Um, the mohair looks good still. It probably has a little bit less of a halo than when I first knitted it, but it's still pleasantly fluffy for sure. This cardigan has been washed several times um, and I just lay it flat to dry and block it again. The buttons are these little plastic ones. I think they're from Drops. So. It has been on my mind for probably about six months now that I would like to knit another cardigan from this pattern. Because I know that I wear this cardigan so much, I feel like I can justify spending a little bit more money on it than I did last time around. I had a lot of different ideas in my head for what kind of yarn I wanted to use. I had some Sandless Gun Alpaca Silk, Alpaca Silka, I still don't know in a lovely shade of dusty blue, which I really thought about. And I had some matching mohair from Missing for Olive, but I ended up planning to use that mohair for something else. So I didn't end up making it. I still have that sandless gun, alpaca, silka. I've also debated knitting one up in some nori yarn like this, something with a little bit of stripe or texture to it. They do have some sort of DK weight yarns, but I ended up going with the Missing for Olive the Merino and Soft Silk Mohair from Missing for Olive held together is probably my all-time favourite yarn combination. It makes for a beautiful DK weight fabric which wears really well and I find the Knitting for Olive Mohair completely non-scratchy. I actually get asked pretty often um, by people either who've worn Drops Mohair and found it irritating or who are wondering whether to buy the Drops Mohair or buy something more expensive because the Drops Mohair from what I can tell is probably two or three pounds cheaper at full price than any other mohair that you can pretty much buy in the UK. It is very affordable. People often ask me if it's worth getting a different one or whether they might find a different one more comfortable. And what I have to say is that there is a very noticeable difference to me between Drops mohair and more expensive mohairs. The Drops mohair is unbeaten on price, but when it comes to pretty much any other measure, I love the Knitting for Olive mohair. It's pretty expensive, I feel like it costs twice as much in the UK, but I still end up reaching for it because it feels incredibly soft. I think actually you can visually see the fibres are finer and fluffier on the Knitting for Olive, like they look softer. It is very easy to feel how much softer it is. Knitting for Olive also have my favourite colour selection out of any yarn brand. You guys know me right now and you know that I love beiges, creams and very soft blues and greens and Knitting for Olive have so many yarns that tick those boxes for me. 
I heard recently that Well Love Knits, whose channel I very much enjoy, um, mentioned me on her channel when she was speaking about podcasters that she enjoys watching, and I watched it to see what she said about me because I was a little bit curious, and she just said, I don't know anything about her, but I really like her colour choices. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I understand that. I really like my colour choices too. So yes, Knitting for Olives, blues, greens, lovely. They have more shades of beige and brown than any other brand that I can think of. And if you are into very soft pinks and stuff like that, they do have those types of colours too. They also have a couple of really bright colours, but really not very many. Generally, I think that a pretty significant proportion of their colour options are colours that I would use, which I can't say about many yarn brands. The other thing that I find really appealing about the Knitting for Olive mohair is it definitely seems to be more ethical than other mohairs. I don't know a huge amount about this, but from what I can tell, Knitting for Olive use a no-kill method to make their silk, both their pure silk yarn and also now for their mohair. I seem to remember like a year ago looking it up and they said they didn't yet use that type of silk for their mohair, but I believe they now do. I should probably check that before I put it in a video. Anyway, I feel like I'm not very well equipped to speak about different types of mohair. I'm sure you guys, if you are watching me, have already heard of the Knit Pearl Girl, but I know for a fact that they have a video on their channel where they review, I believe, every mohair available in the UK and compare them all to each other. If you are interested in which mohair to buy, that is a great video to watch. My personal take is knitting for all of you if you can afford it, and drops if you can't. There are a lot of mohairs that I haven't tried. I haven't tried the Izzia one, notably, which I know a lot of people really love and it's at the top of my list to try. But I think if you watch the Knit Pearl Girl video, um, you may end up noticing that they have a similar overall opinion to me. I think they have similar sort of recommended mohairs to me. And to repeat something which I think they said in their video, I haven't watched this video in months, so <laughs> just going from memory. They say that they always recommend going for the drops mohair over something with acrylic or other synthetic fibres in it, like, um, is it Hobby that does Diablo? That type of yarn. I don't like yarn with plasticky bits in it. I think it's better, for me at least, my personal taste, to buy a cheaper mohair yarn like drops than spending pretty much the same amount on a plasticky mohair yarn. Obviously, no hate to people who do want to use acrylic, I respect that, it's easy care. I just really like how these natural fibres feel. That was a long spiel about how much I like knitting for olive mohair, and I feel like I do it in most videos because I use their mohair very often. But as I sit here with a slightly scratchy neck from the drops mohair, I just can't get it out of my head. Anyway, I should just jump to showing you the finished piece, shouldn't I? I had got the yarn for this in the last video. It was a birthday present from my parents, which is very kind of them. They gave it to me early so that I could knit the piece to wear on my birthday, but at that point I hadn't yet cast on. So here is my second April cardigan. The merino is in the shade Marzipan and the soft silk mohair is the shade Putty. Oh dear, I've dropped coffee on the sleeve in several places already. It's lucky that I drink such weak coffee, isn't it? I'm pretty sure the marzipan and putty both come in matching mohair and merino shades, but I bought these from a local yarn shop, Yarn Works in Hadley, which I very strongly recommend. They have an amazing selection of beautiful hand-dyed yarns, but also a nice selection of missing for olive yarns. They don't have the full colour range though, so this was the best match that I could find when I was in stock. I knitted the size small again. I did not gauge swatch for this project, the reason why is that I have knitted a lot of pieces using this exact yarn combination on this size needle, and so I feel pretty confident that my gauge is roughly what the pattern calls for. Also, because I'm not super picky about fit, if it did come out slightly more oversized, which I suppose is the most likely thing, since I think part of the reason this one fits so tightly is because my gauge was tighter back then, I was using metal needles. So if anything, this was going to come up slightly larger, and that was fine by me. I, again, pretty much followed the size small pattern with no modifications, the only exception being the button band. I want to hold up these two cardigans so that you can see both the button bands, but maybe it's not possible. So, this brown one, the original version of the April cardigan, has a ribbed button band, sort of classic way of doing a knitted button band. You pick up stitches around the neckline, you knit some ribbing, you, I think, cast off stitches to do the buttonholes. 
But for this one, I really wanted to do a double knitted button band. I've seen a few different people knit April cardigans with double knitted button bands off the top of my head. Um, I think there's a really beautiful April cardigan by, and I'm probably going to pronounce the name wrong, I'll get it wrong, but I think the Instagram username is Emma underscore knit stuff. They have done, I think, I believe they knitted a larger size of April cardigan and then felted it. So it has that really tight gauge, even look. It is beautiful and it has a double knitted button band. I think that was the one that made me go, look, if I'm going to knit this cardigan again, I'm doing the double knitted button band. So since it's not in the pattern, I guess I will just sort of speak a little about how I did the button band. I picked up stitches all the way around the neck. Um, I don't know what the rate of stitch pickup given in the pattern is for the ribbed button band, but I picked up one stitch in every row and then at the back of the neck, where you're picking up stitches on the cast on edge, I picked up one stitch per column. One stitch per stitch along that edge, if that makes any sense. The row gauge along the front ended up perfect. It lies really flat, it looks very nice. At the back of the neck, um, it would have been better if I could have picked up more stitches. You can see the back of the neck is quite sort of small, like this is quite a narrow head hole because I feel like this top edge is pulled in a little bit by the button band. It looks lovely, I'm not bothered by it, but for future reference, like if I'm doing a longer section of picking up stitches and doing a double knit band, and I'm doing it along a top edge, I will probably try and size up the needle or pick up more stitches or something. I used a three millimeter needle to do this. I honestly, again, didn't swatch. I have watched Hive Knits on the Hive Knits podcast talking about doing the first cardigan and how they did all of these gauge swatches for figuring out the correct row gauge for their double knitted button band. I guess because this isn't a pattern because I was just like doing this for myself and I was not so picky about it. I just went straight for a three millimeter needle. The cardigan is knitted on a four millimeter needle. So three millimeter kind of made sense to me. I also had a 100 centimeter, three millimeter needle, which is, it turns out a very useful thing and perfect for putting all of the stitches around the neck onto while you're working on the button band. The button band took me like a day and a half and I knit quite a lot of hours both those days. It was incredibly time consuming. It is 15 stitches wide, by which I mean I cast on 15 stitches to knit the button band. So half of those stitches are on the front face and half are on the back. I guess it's like a seven stitch wide button band or like a seven and a half stitch wide button band if you don't count the fact that it's folded over. But yes, there were 15 extra stitches cast on to knit the button band. I just did regular double knitting around the neck and then to do the buttonholes, I just sort of knit the, the two sets of stitches separately. So like I carried on the double knitting on the first half of the stitches and then I carried on the double knitting on the second half of the stitches. So I ended up with these two separate pieces. I just cut the yarn in between them and then I carried on double knitting all the way across all of the stitches again afterwards. That's a very bad explanation. I just sort of intuitively did what felt right for me, but I'm fairly sure that if you look at the videos that were made to go with the champagne cardigan by Petite Knit, that there is a video where all of the buttonholes are showed. That was probably more helpful than my description. So yes, I'm super happy with how this button band looks. I think it's really lovely and it does lie really nicely and really flat. Like the gauge seems correct. The buttons that I used are I think from Drops. I definitely bought them from Purple Sheep Yarn, which means I think they just like stock only drop stuff. So these are probably Drops buttons. I bought them a while ago, so I don't know what the diameter is, but it's probably pretty close to what's specified in the pattern. I don't actually remember what I bought them for, but I think it might have been when I was planning to knit a dusty blue April cardigan with the Santa Scarn Alpaca Silka because it was exactly the right number of buttons and I think they're the right size too. So yes, I just had four of these buttons and they look perfect with it. I sewed them on with the merino, which I think they'll stay on. Besides, these buttons are probably 20p, so even if I lose one, I can probably replace it pretty easily and sew another one on. I'm currently debating trying them on like right now, not even on b-roll, just putting them on now to show you. Yeah, let's do that. My hair is already a mess. I think my fringe probably needs cutting and it's going to get progressively more disheveled throughout this try on segment. So this is the original Drops Flora and Drops Kid Silk April cardigan. I think this one must be smaller because when I wear this cardigan, 
I don't really do up this top button because I feel like here it pulls apart a little bit too much and it's not such a cute look. Like I feel like I'm busting out of it a little bit. But with the top button undone, like I really like this look. Um, I don't mind the sort of deeper V that you get and these buttons certainly fit perfectly. Well, it still wants to pull apart a tiny bit, but I think even an oversized cardigan is going to pull out a little bit because that button band is never going to sit totally vertically. As you can see, the sleeve length is just right. I don't know whether I measured this according to the measurements in the pattern or just winged it. I made this so long ago, I'm not sure. Okay, so for comparison, here is the new Knitting for Olive version of the April cardigan. Hopefully this way you can see how nice the button band looks. It is flaring out just a little bit at the bottom. I guess I probably cast on too loosely. That'll be a mental note for my next double knitted button band. The buttonholes are just so pleasing to me. Look at them, like they're so clean. And if I just button it up... I think this one also looks cute with the top button undone, but um, it actually fits really well with the top button done up as well. I think maybe part of it is because the double knitted button band is thicker and more structured, so it is less prone to sort of pull out of shape a little bit. Maybe I will just wear <laughs> this cardigan for the rest of the video. It was a bit hot for that jumper anyway. Anyway, I think you've heard more than enough about this cardigan and I do have two more finished objects. The next one of which I think is also pretty large and pretty exciting. Like I think I spent longer working on this than on the cardigan, maybe? This was definitely something that I just bought new yarn for in the last video. This is the Sporty Knit Skort, which is my own pattern. It's currently in testing. I have been super happy to get a lot of messages from people asking when it will be released. I did have to make some pretty significant sizing changes to the pattern, so I felt the need to give my testers a sizable <laughs> time extension as a result of that. So I don't anticipate this pattern will be released until mid to late October. So I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about the wait, but it is a lovely pattern for winter. I knitted this version as a skirt for winter. This is actually half of a sporty knit skirt. This one does not have shorts underneath for the time being. I may well leave it that way because I chose this colour with the intention of wearing this in the winter as a sort of wool skirt with tights underneath, which I love as a look. This is the colour Peppercorn. I think it's colour number eight and it is in Drops Soft Tweed. So this is a very, very cheap project to knit, especially because I think right now, definitely when I bought this yarn, the soft tweed was 40% off. I want to say it costs like £12 to knit this, I don't know. I used just barely over four skeins to knit the skirt part only. This is the second size, I think I just switched to the fifth skein to knit the last couple of rows and bind off. And like I said, that doesn't include the shorts, it's just the skirt part. I may yet add shorts to this depending on how the testing goes. I guess if I want to sort of test the adjusted shorts pattern myself, which maybe I should, I could add shorts to this, but at least currently I'm very happy with the way it is. And because it's been so long since the last episode, with the exception of this cardigan, which I just finished, these are pieces that I've been wearing quite a bit. I actually went on holiday. I went up to Liverpool for a week to stay with my boyfriend and his family. And I wore this skirt when I was there. It was my skirt for traveling. Like, I knitted this to exactly the length that the pattern tells you to knit it to, and it fits very nicely. It's a length where I feel comfortable walking around in it. With tights, I'd probably feel less comfortable without, but it also feels like a short and cute length. With that being said, I am about 163 centimeters tall. I feel like it's useful to know people's measurements when you're looking at them talking about clothing and what sizes they're wearing and stuff, so yes, I am 163 centimeters tall. I have about an 83 centimeter bust. I wear in the UK a size six or eight top and size eight trousers. I weigh, I don't know, 50, anywhere between 52 and 55 kilos, depending. I don't know if that's useful since everyone's shaped so differently, but do with that information what you will. So this is the second size of the skirt and it fits me really nicely. Obviously there's quite a lot of customizability in a pattern like this because you can cut the elastic to fit your waist but what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, height. Because I am, I'm actually not short. I think I'm pretty much exactly average height in the UK. 
I feel comfortable listing the length that I knitted it to, that I feel comfortable in, as the length in the pattern. So if you're shorter than me, basically anywhere below average height, you may want to make it shorter. If you're taller, you may certainly want to make it a bit longer. But I feel like since I'm average height, that's a pretty good guideline to do yarn calculations and stuff from. The bigger sizes are naturally graded to be a little bit longer. I guess you sort of assume people are slightly taller. That's where my thought process came from. I will try and put in some pictures or video of me wearing this because it never looks super appealing when it's lying flat. I have noticed the first couple of testers have finished theirs. Major respect to them because this is a lot of knitting. I had a knit night Zoom call the other night and Roz of Knitting with Roz was knitting their version of this skirt and they were like, it's taking so long, it's so painful. And it really is. I guess I should try and make my pattern sound appealing, but definitely this is a bigger project than it looks, especially towards the bottom of the skirt where you have quite a lot of fabric. There's a lot to do. But yes, this adjusted sizing I really love. It fits really nicely and this has been a skirt that I've reached for over other skirts in my wardrobe. Like when I was choosing an outfit to go to Liverpool in, I kept picking different skirts out of my wardrobe and putting them on and then taking them off again. I think I tried on like four or five skirts and I ended up in the one that I've made. So that's a really good sign. I guess I will move on to my next finished object. These definitely, like I said, have been worn like everything in this video. Um, I did wash them yesterday, so you're at least looking at clean socks. These are my Una socks from 52 Weeks of Socks. I put them on sock blockers the first time I washed them or my nasty cardboard sock blocker, but the second time I washed them, I just laid them out flat. So the lace is not so visible now as it was before. Hopefully you can see the lace. Um, it's also a little bit discolored here because I have been wearing them with Doc Martens and these are very, very white socks, not even cream, just white. So yes, I don't remember the designer name, but it will be linked in the description. It is a pattern from 52 Weeks of Socks, but you can buy the patterns in 52 Weeks of Socks individually on Ravelry, I think. I love this pattern. I have knitted quite a few pairs of socks from 52 Weeks of Socks now, and this is definitely my favorite so far. The yarn I also really enjoyed working with. This yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply, and the color is Marshmallow. The thing about West Yorkshire Spinners is I really like their Signature 4-ply. I think it's a really good sock yarn, and it comes in a lot of colors and loads of stripes and prints and stuff, and somehow I like almost none of them. This is exactly what I was saying about how Knitting for Olive just seemed to make yarn in colours that I love and West Yorkshire Spinners just seem to make yarn in colours I hate. I guess the white and the grey are nice but that's sort of all I would reach for. Anyway, I really recommend the yarn and if you do like very bright and vibrant colours you will definitely have a better time choosing colours than me. It's a lovely sock. The lace is beautiful. When I was speaking about it in the last video I said that I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure whether the lace would look too confused, but actually it's come together and it looks beautiful. I'm so happy with them. Compared to the original pattern, the only modifications that I made were I knitted, I think, five chart repeats before I got to the heel flap. I think the pattern called for eight. Also, I knitted it on 2.5 millimeter needles rather than 2.25, but I knitted the smaller size. I think I also had somebody in a podcast, I don't remember whose podcast it was, saying that they'd modified the toe to knit it as a regular wedge toe rather than being more curved. Maybe I'm imagining that. And I don't think I even read the pattern for the toe when I was knitting it. I think I just reached my foot length and was like, great, let's knit a toe, and then I just did it the normal way. So if it is supposed to have a more varied rate of decreases in the toe, I didn't do that. It's just like regular decreases till there are 24 stitches left kitchen to stitch up the toe. I feel like that's about all there is to say about these socks. Now, I obviously um, really enjoy knitting socks. I was never a sock person, I never knitted socks until I started knitting slightly fancy, lacy, cabled socks, and then suddenly I was hooked. That is the sock knitting for me. So I have both a work in progress and a new acquisition of yarn based around this. You may have noticed that every sock that I've showed in one of these podcasts is knitted with a different yarn which is deliberate because I don't really know that much about sock yarn. I didn't know what I was going to look for in it. I didn't know which type to buy. And so I've just settled for buying all of them. <laughs> like every time I knit a new sock, I knit it with a different yarn. And then what I would very much like to do is perhaps at the end of this year, or at the end of next year, make a video discussing all of the sock yarn that I've tried, comparing the colors, 
how it's worn, how it feels, how it looks, and just speak about which I enjoyed the most. And that way you'll also get to see a bunch of different fancy sock patterns because I am also not planning on knitting the same sock pattern twice. So recently I bought some new sock yarn. I was running out, honestly, I didn't have that much left and so I bought four socks worth of yarn from Lovecrafts. I've never ordered anything from Lovecrafts before, they have a lot of quite nice yarn, lots of Lang yarns, lots of Noro yarns, and so they had a sale and I just browsed and picked out four discounted yarns to try. I will show the sock that I'm knitting afterwards, but I will just mention the yarn that I bought. This is the first one, this is I believe Novita Venla. The colour on Ravelry is like something in, I assume, Finnish, but I think it's called Sandy Beige, Sand, something to do with sand. It's the beige one, Novita Venla. It's pretty affordable. Onto the ones that I'm not yet knitting with. There are some brands which I think they're Lovecraft exclusives or only stocked in the UK from Lovecrafts or whatever, and I think some of these might be those types of brand. This is Toast by Debbie Bliss. It comes in a 100 gram skein, which is always nice. This is colour number two, silver, and this is 65% wool, 25% polyamide, and 10% cashmere. It is very soft. I don't know if that's softer wool or if you can actually feel the 10% cashmere, but I'll be interested to see how that affects the wear on these socks. I wear my knit socks every day. <laughs> like, it just feels wrong if I'm not wearing a hand knitted sock at this point. So, my socks really do get wear tested. I should mention this one is 25% nylon polyamide, 75% wool, I think. I'll speak more about that when I talk about the stock I'm missing up. I hear a lot of people talking about Regia or Regia, I don't know, probably Regia, it's German. They do a lot of interesting printed fancy yarn. I like my sock yarn plain, but I did buy a very sensible kind of dark grey colour. This is colour number 44. I figured this could be a really good black tights, I like wearing socks over my tights, a yarn to make socks to pair with black tights or to go in my Doc Martens which won't discolour them and make them go grey like my white socks. So yes, I think this is also, I will check, 75% wool, 25% polyamide. And I bought one more sock yarn. This one I'm sure is a Lovecraft exclusive because it is always on sale, I never see anybody using it. This is Milamia Naturally Soft Sock. It is very soft compared to my other sock yarns, I have to say. It is again 75% wool, 25% polyamide, and it comes in 50 gram skeins, so I did buy two of them. This colour, I can't see the colour number, but I'm pretty sure it's called Laurel. I was hoping it would be a lot more muted than this, um, but this is quite green. I don't quite know what to do with it. Actually, I've seen a sock pattern, which I guess I'll talk about in a second which kind of tempts me. Anyway, let's actually go back to my work in progress pieces and talk about this sock. I have knitted a lot of socks from 52 Weeks of Socks and I felt like branching out and doing something different. Some of the socks in 52 Weeks of Socks are too fancy for my taste. I'm not the biggest fan of knitting colour work socks, I always seem to abandon them halfway and I don't like bobbles. Plus, I kind of like socks that are fancy but have a simple enough repeat that I can quickly memorise it and then do it when I'm not sitting with the book and definitely quite a few of the socks in that book are a bit more complicated. So I was looking on Ravelry and I found a designer called Yucca or Yucca. I think they're called Yucca, but their Ravelry is Yucca. And they do loads of sock patterns. I think they have at least one free sock pattern that's really cute, but also loads of paid ones. And their Ravelry was super interesting to me because the constructions are so varied. There were toe-up socks, cuff down socks, socks which had options for both, there were tubby toe options for a lot of the socks, there were socks that were constructed the other direction, like over the foot rather than up or down the foot, which I thought looked really interesting, made of mohair. I am sure that I'm going to get much entertainment from Yucca sock patterns because there are so many and they're pretty affordable, most of them aren't free, I think they cost about £3, I'm willing to pay £3 for a nice sock pattern. So this pattern is called Cinnamon and it is by Yucca, Yucca. It looks like this. I wasn't super sure how these sort of long stitches were formed, but it is sort of, I guess, like a dip stitch. If you know, I don't know if that's the correct terminology. There's ones where you shove your needle down and then you like pick up a loop from four rows down or whatever and put it back on the needle and knit it. 
um, it's done like that. It's a very, very easy repeat. Like, you don't even have to knit the full repeat to get it, just read through it and then you can just put the pattern away and knit it without thinking, which I love. And it's very easy to read your work and see what you're supposed to be doing, what row you're up to. I'm not very good at reading my knitting, despite being someone who's knitted for quite a long time. Um, but this sock is well within my abilities, so I do appreciate that. I've found this so addictive to knit, like, I just can't put it down. I keep putting down nice cardigans and stuff because I keep knitting the sock. It has this little twisted rib at the side, which is really cute, and it is a toe-up sock. I don't knit toe-up socks. <laughs> A couple of reasons, firstly, I've never really figured out how long to knit it before I start doing the gusset increases. I don't know what the best way to tell that is. Like obviously it gives you a number of rows or like a length that it's going to be, but even so, I struggle. The other reason I like toe-up socks is because I find casting on the toe really tricky. Not like there's any difficult techniques, but just that it's really fiddly doing increases on like a double-sided row from a magic cast on and also the ends of my magic cast on always end up really lumpy and I don't really know why. I just sort of shove them through to the inside of the sock and it looks okay but I think it would be neater if I'd knitted it cuffed down. And I know what you're thinking, Florence if you've knitted so many socks why don't you just adapt this simple stitch pattern and knit it cuffed down but to be honest part of the appeal for me of trying loads of different sock patterns by different designers constructed in different ways is to try different sock construction techniques. So I've been trying to stick to doing the heel, maybe not the toe, <laughs> or cuff or whatever that's actually specified in the patterns. So I can try all different constructions and really find out what yarn and what type of construction is my favorite. So I forced myself to do the toe-up sock. These needles I just got. Previously I've knitted all of my socks on my interchangeable CNET bamboo needles, 2.5 millimeters. I wanted a pair of 2.25mm needles because I hoped it would make the socks wear slightly better. I bought these Addy ones and I hate them. Um, <laughs> the cable is annoying and they're too blunt and it makes the increases really tricky. So I caved in and I ordered some Chiaogu 2.25mm needles. The other reason I wanted to buy a pair is because I wanted metal ones I could shove in my bag without risking them snapping, like with my very expensive and lovely bamboo ones. So yes, I'm currently waiting for the Chiaogu ones to arrive. Maybe today, fingers crossed, but I have cast on and suffered with these Addy ones. I mean, they're fine. I just find doing an M1R is a bit fiddly when your needles are blunt and your knitting is tiny. So these are not the needles for me. I will get back to you on how the Chiaogus go because I know people love them. I think people say they don't like the tip on them so much, but they really like the cable and that maybe higher higher sharps are the best ones for having a pointy tip. So maybe I'll have to try those too. I don't know, I only really need one pair of sock needles. So yes, these are the Cinnamon Socks by Yuka. I'm having so much fun knitting these, I cannot put them down. They're flying off the needles and I love them. I also feel like they're a bit more autumnal than some of my lacy socks, um, so that's pretty cool. And I was saying that I had a pattern in mind for that really green Millimere yarn. There's another yucca pattern, I think it's also toe-up, so that's going to be fun, called Komarebi, which is a leaf lace pattern, and I think it's really pretty, and I feel like the green and the leaves would go together nicely and make the green pain me a little bit less. So we're going to give that a go. I have one more like active whip to show you. There was a camisole I showed in the last episode, which I haven't made any progress with, I don't know whether I'm going to frog it, I'm still trying to figure out the numbers, because it was self-drafted and it was proving to be quite irritating to fit. Fingers crossed I'll figure it out. And also, the sweater number 15 I haven't made that much progress on. I absolutely refuse to take my 4.5mm needles out of it, and there is something else I want to make on 4.5mm needles, so that will hopefully force me to finish it. But I was again on my like knit night thing um, on Zoom, and Roz said that they are knitting the sweater number 15 in Michaelmas. So if I end up knitting it in Michaelmas at the same time as other people in my knit group, that would be cool and will probably encourage me to finish it. So I'm not worrying about it too much right now. Maybe it's weird, but my biggest motivation for knitting certain pieces right now is I obviously am in a very beautiful house right now. And once I get back to uni, my room is tiny, the furnishings are colorful and ugly, and the room is north facing, so it's very, very dark. And it's almost impossible to take any pictures of any of my knitwear there. 
I guess I could take pictures in my department or whatever, which is nicer, but that would require me dragging somebody out to take pictures of me because I can't pose in front of the camera, which I've like balanced somewhere like I do at home. So taking pictures for Instagram or to put on Ravelry to show my net pieces is much harder when I'm at university. And so I wanted to really finish pieces that I wanted to photograph before I go back. That sounds so, so stupid, but yeah, it's the truth. This yarn is also <laughs> Knitting for Olive, Merino and Soft Silk Mohair. The colour is Dusty Sea Green. My boyfriend picked this colour out for me. It's not something I'd normally go for because it's so dark, but I actually do really like it. I am self-drafting another cardigan. I am obviously hooked on cardigans at the moment, and I wanted to do one with a double knit button band, but also with ties, like sort of a wrap, but not like a full wrap, just sort of a fold over and tie kind of wrap, rather than buttons. That's a very bad description. I posted some sketches of how I wanted it to look about a month or two ago on Instagram. I was originally planning on knitting it in sunless gun cos that I had, and I might still do a chunky version of that at some point, but it wasn't really speaking to me at the time. But now I'm knitting it in this yarn combination on 4mm needles, I feel a lot better about it. I actually just cast this on last night and it's really fast. I've already divided the body and sleeves um, because it's quite a high armpit. <laughs> like it's a very fitted body and fitted sleeves, so there's not so much knitting to do. So yes, uh, not very much to see here. Hopefully there will be more next time. It feels lovely, I'm enjoying the colour and I really would like to be able to photograph it before I go back to uni. And on that note, here is another project which I have self-drafted and I really want to get on with, but which I'm holding off on because I know I can photograph it while I'm at uni. I really wanted to do some cabled mittens, like fingerless, but that come quite high up on my hand so you can tuck your fingers inside them when you're not using your hands. I have a couple of skeins of heavy merino from Knitting for Olive in the shade Mushroom Rose. <laughs> I'm probably the only person who does this because it's bad practice, but I'm swatching with a different colour of heavy merino that's scrap left over from another project. But I did these little cables which have squiggles on and I really like them. So I have this vision for some cables gloves which look like this with squiggles and cables down the middle. And because I can easily photograph them in department because I can take pictures myself, They've got nice white tables that I can put my hands on. This is such a silly reason to choose an order to work on projects in. If you want my more logical uh, reasoning, this is a heavier, winterier project than a light DK weight cardigan, so I guess this makes more sense to knit later. So I've written up a chart for it that I quite like, and I've sort of planned out stitch counts, but I'm not going to cast it on until I go back to uni. I have like a limited window of quiet before people start making coffee for coffee time, so I need to hurry up and finish. The last thing I have to show is some new yarn that I got. Normally when I get new yarn, it's like knitted up in the next video, you might have noticed from the two yarn acquisitions from the last podcast being this cardigan and that skirt. Um, but I don't anticipate I'll knit this one up super soon. When I was in London the other day, I went into Beautiful Knitters. I've mentioned before, we don't really have a yarn shop close to me when I'm at University in Cambridge or when I'm here, it's a bit of a drive away and I don't drive. So going to a yarn shop is pretty unusual for me. But I went to Beautiful Knitters in London and I got these two skeins. They are the same. Color is number nine. This is Jardim Jardam by Rosarios 4. It is a cotton and wool blend. So it's 45% cotton and 55% wool, which I really like. It doesn't feel or look very cottony, which I enjoy because I don't like cotton very much. And I thought it would make a lovely summer top. These are 230 meters each. I'm saying from memory, yeah, they are. So I can probably just about get a camisole out of the two of them, um, but I may end up getting another color and doing stripes. I really want to draft a striped t-shirt and if I got some cream, I think I could do that. So these are probably going to go away for a bit while I work on winter knits. But this is something I'm very much looking forward to knitting up later in the winter, ready for spring, I guess. And I think that's everything. I thought this was going to be a really fast episode, um, and I did have to speed through the second half a bit, but there was a lot more to talk about than I thought. I just remembered all of my sock yarn midway through and had to run and get it. But yes, I should head off. I will see you guys soon. Like I said, there'll be some special episodes while I'm at uni, plus 
whatever regular podcast episodes I film, probably less frequently because I will knit less when I'm full-time studenting seven days a week. But thank you very much for watching, I'll see you again soon and goodbye!